Hello, is it me you're looking for? Can you hear me in the background even more? Can you hear me in the background even more? All right, I can tell that you can hear in the background, so... Lonnie's in... Reepa, John Doe, Doe, Doe. There's a reason why there's no video. Cause here I am, folks. Good evening, Vietnam! <laughs> hey, Kiev, and uh, four people out there watching. Scraggly hair day. Ah, so pretty, so pretty. <laughs> Just to kind of start things off on a weird thing, um, I've been watching the drama spear like the last like couple months, and another individual that I'd been hanging out on his live streams off and on, and uh, it's interesting that one of the biggest mooches in the drama spear right now is hosting his own stream on his show. And he's going on talking about the guy that I hang with, uh, hang over on the YouTube channel with, um, you know, just in general. And he's going on, he's going to his peeps. Okay, let's look at the lineup that this guy is aligning himself with to combat against me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... I didn't bother to stick around and watch uh, if I come up in it, but uh, it's interesting if he does bring me up. Don't know what the heck he's going to say about me. <laughs> but, I mean, doesn't matter. I don't go after the guy, and, you know, I'm not putting my eggs all in one basket, as uh, I like to say, so... With that said, I will like to express that, I guess, at this point in time. Um, uh, a casual warning to people out there. Again, try to stay independent as much as possible. Try not to throw your, ba your, your bags. And I'm thinking earlier because now they want everything in a plastic bag. You can't bring a, your own bags into a grocery store. Because they're not sanitized and everything else. So anyways, with that said, getting into groups with people is great. The inherent problem is, is getting involved with the wrong group of people that make other people have the wrong impression of you. And, you know, I want to instill this into... Everyone that's watching this or everyone who does watch this on the replay. For the best of your interest in staying on YouTube, try to keep yourself independent for the most part. Associate yourself lightly with certain groups that you feel are of a high moral quality and reflect and bring a positive influence into your life and you'll never go wrong with that said hello everybody and i hope everyone is safe and doing well out there my name of course is terry or as a lot of people call me terry's g g and g or my other fan my other aliases my terry bear and uh, Terry Burwine, which uh, I know certain individuals 
might have that information now, but hey, I don't care. You just can't do anything. With that said, again, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is being safe given what is going on right now in the world. And it is chaotic and crazy. Let me tell you about earlier today when I just was out. I've just been in the house for probably about, excuse me, about 20, 30 minutes. And my local Walmart is actually lining people up, making people at least try to stay six feet apart from each other, which ends up being like one person's like this, that person behind them's like that, and so forth. So, but basically, uh, in my town's Walmart, they basically were like, if one person went in, went in, they didn't let another person go into the store unless somebody came out. Uh, everyone was behind plastic, um, plastic plexiglass things. Another one of the crazy things that's going on right now, something I heard when I actually was at the beer store. Yes, I do occasionally drink, and yes, I do occasionally drink beer. <laughs> but when I was at the, at the beer store, uh, probably about an hour ago, they were already talking about that there, there might be mandating people to come into... Uh, those establishments that are still running to actually wear a mask and gloves. And if you do not have a mask and gloves on, they might not allow you to come in and shop, which would be pretty devastating for anyone that needs groceries. Um, also, another thing going on, at, there is very little to no cash in hand sales or services going on uh, local cab companies in my town are accepting cash but everyone is basically doing you either pay by debit debit visa or credit card and uh, in fact when i was at the post office sending something off there was a lady in there that came in for a, a a book of stamps and she got into the lineup and she goes to reach into her purse and she's like uh <laughs> come on on real beer your way <laughs> okay let, let me quickly finish up the post office thing the lady went to pay for her pay for her stamps she reaches in her purse and they say debit or visa and the lady goes excuse me he goes you heard me right miss it's it's please it's either debit or visa and the lady got all insulted and she's like well you don't have to be so rude about it and he's like well excuse me miss it is the covid virus covid19 virus that's going around we kind of are trying to protect ourselves and each other Hey, moderator to the stars, Ben Combs. In the side chat. And Brian Bond. Welcome again, everyone. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying in my story. The lady who comes in there to buy a, a book of stamps, she starts getting all offended because of the way the guy said to her, you know, debit card or credit card but no cash and she's like well you don't have to be so rude about it and she gets all in a pissy fit and you know even i was like going okay yeah you're like taking it a little bit over the top wow talk about a blast from the past folks if you have not given his channel a follow one of the original Canadians on the YouTubes way back in the day with me in the various group that I was involved. Telepathic Traffic. 
Hello, sir, and I hope you are well. Even though Traffic is not very active on YouTube anymore, do give him a follow. He has a lot of awesome comment, uh, content uh, that he did put out back in the day, so as long as he has some of his old videos up, there is some good knowledge and stuff that he's done in the past. And uh, anyone else in the side chat, give him a like and a follow if you haven't yet. Uh, so, yeah, needless to say, um, also in regards to the beer store, the, um, the beer store is only doing credit card and debit as well, too. They're not touching cash. Everyone is basically, uh, basically crazy right now. Like, uh, we went from, like, 77 officially openable things to um i think we're down to 44 and now while i was out earlier today there is actually talk now that um certain um stores that actually carry food but also clothing and so forth are actually going to be closed this easter weekend so uh anyone in ontario and possibly the rest of canada i would encourage you to go out there and get all the stuff you need before friday because i believe friday through monday uh stores like walmart the superstore any type of store that has groceries but also has some other thing like clothing and whatnot they're going to be uh, cut down and yes as Ben helped correct me in the side chat and those 44 only do curbside pickup that as well there's a lot of a lot of the places that are still open that are going to be a limited number of people coming in or some of those businesses are going to be basically only based off of online ordering or i guess maybe over the phone ordering or something and delivery so it's gonna start to get rough like really rough i'm glad that i went out today and grabbed basically um as i said uh, as i sent ben a picture and said some essentials and ben got a chuckle out of it because he's seen what my one thing of essentials was was again I went to the beer store and to uh, to follow up on what did I get for beer? Well, you know, all the hardcore drinkers are drinking Michelob Light. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big drinker. So something like Michelob Light, especially when it comes to counting carbs and whatnot, uh, is a big thing. Oh, <laughs> awesome telepathic, and uh, you're very welcome for the shout-out. And uh, again, uh, if you ever are on, online again and you do want to uh, get involved with a positive group of people that involves a fair amount of Canadians, definitely uh, sub to Ben. Ben is on. Little shameless plug for Ben's shows. Ben has shows Sunday night with varying guests, and he hosts his own show, Canucks with Guitars, Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you know, this past this past Sunday and Monday that just occurred. Quite honestly, I I will say right now, to me, was probably two of Ben's biggest shows for who he's who he had come on as guests. Uh, Ryan Burke came on Sunday night. That was an awesome show. And last night, for over two hours, Ben was chumming it up with, can his own, Pete Thorne. And that was another awesome stream. And uh, so... Pay attention to Ben's channel because he's probably going to have some 
more interesting uh, guests pop up on his channel. So that said, let me look back over to the side chat here. Uh, I tried to get wine yesterday, but both the LCBO were closed. Yeah. Hey, fart, I killed noobs. Nice to see you, sir. I hope you are well as well. Again, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is finding ways to not be so bored during this crap that is going on right now in the world. Uh, again, unfortunately, it's sad to hear how the U.S. is going. Um, I'm not going to elaborate too much on that, but for the positive and great folks that I do know in the U.S., you know, I really do feel for you folks, and I hope that you are all safe and make it through this ordeal to the other side. And here in Canada, we're not exactly super great, but we're not exactly bad either. We're, we're better than probably, I would say, most of the worst places. I think we're probably in the... Well, I know Ontario itself is probably in the 5,000 range. Not that I should actually be trying to talk about this more, but it kind of is a big event. Um, it's awesome that people are interacting in the side chat. Since this is a private channel, not a... Um, not a public channel of a entity or group per se, you know, I definitely have no problem with the people socializing in the side chat. That's great. And as long as everyone's positive and getting along, you know, that is one of the things I love about a lot of the YouTube guitar community is there is a large group of individuals that are very positive and good human beings. And uh, getting back to kind of uh, some thoughts I had about a certain strange individual that had been following me for a while recently and making his own weird videos about me and such... I got to thinking about that, and since I've got people on here and talking, you know, I'm going to say something about that. You know, the last seven years, I've gone through a lot of stress with caring for my mom, and especially these last two years before she passed away in September. So I was trying to think of some of the reasoning and the rationale why some of these individuals were were talking and thinking the way that they were about me. And the only thing I can think of is the stress I was going under dealing with my mom's failing health probably had spilled over into the YouTube side a bit. But that said... Here's the other thing, though, is that, yes, that might have made me a little intense and everything else. The reality is, is I'm a social observer. I've been online since 96. I've seen a lot of good and bad. And this is the one thing that I think a lot of people got about how I was acting. And that is, you know, it's imperative to keep the good and positive aspects of those people in and around the guitar community. And the trolling and bothering other people in the community or people who are trying to start up YouTube channels or be part of YouTube with their own channel. Those people need to be supported and not driven away. So, I mean, the the constant nos nonsense that went on from these individuals and how they acted, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't really 
overreact or react to the extent that I've seen some people in the drama sphere react to things. And because the reality is, you know, how you act and put yourself online in general is going to show what you are as a person. If you're a genuine, sincere person, the majority of the people will accept you for being that and understand that and sympathize, sympathize with what you're saying and how you're being. Anyone that puts up a video that says that you're a nut, you're obsessed, blah, 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 those people are going to be left to be the kookier looking and foolish individuals for making such videos about the person. So, you know, again, as I've said in past videos, remember, however you put yourself out on the internet, whether it be text, whether it be audio, whether it be video, be yourself. And if you're good and genuine, you have nothing to worry about because you have very little to harm you. And you'll have little chance that any of these people will, um, you know, really come after you. Unless they become really obsessive, then of course you're going to have to get the law involved. But as long as you don't give them any attention, nothing will happen. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that, Ben, that it actually jumped up to 309. That's crazy. So, anyways. What can we do to pass the time? I thought, well, I could use more watch hours. I could use more subs. And I am definitely not streaming as much as I'm capable of with having the time to begin with now. So while I was at Walmart, I uh, I did it again, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, I got another uh, box of cards to crack open. Hello, James Severin. Hello, Music Therapy Lies. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, folks, for the likes. Thank you, folks, for the reviewing and uh, participating in the side chat. I hope I am again coming through nice and clear and great sound. So, I think this was $29. And what we have here is something called a Championship Collection. And it is a box of 16 factory sealed packs of cards in the box. There's uh, packages of cards from 15, 16, 16, 17, and the possibility of a randomly inserted vintage package. So, with that said, well, people are gabbing in the side chat. And Benji shows up right at the same time. Again. Benji 76 show. If you want to know about trading cards, hockey, baseball, football, looking for someone who sells them, maybe looking for someone to trade with, um, give uh, Benji 76 show a follow on his YouTube channel. He does have a Facebook page that uh, he can post in here if people want it. I know some people have uh, 
checked out his Facebook and his YouTube, and he has uh, gotten some uh, likes and follows. So again, uh, this has randomly inserted vintage cards, so it's going to be interesting to see what we get in here for the 16 packs of cards. It looks like the majority of the cards are going to be from Upper Deck in itself. Looks like maybe possibly one of Upper Deck's owned Parkhurst brand maybe in the box. And it looks like maybe a vintage Tops hockey card package could possibly be in here. So, with that said, let's get to crack a lacking and see what we get here. So again, as usual, lovely, lovely box inside the box and you can see that's quite a bit of cards or quite a bit of packs 16 packs factory sealed do i see any vintage packs not really it looks like a lot are the same so let's crack open let's see what we got here for packs we got a, uh, let me rearrange this so that we can kind of see things a bit better. Do, 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 do. Uh, 2015 and 16 Upper Deck Series 1. A 2009 10 Series 2. That's actually a, a fairly thick pack. That's going to be interesting. Two backwards packs of more Upper Deck Series 2 2009 10. I'll try to group them together. A Upper Deck 0809 Victory. A 2017-18 Upper Deck Series 1. That would be actually nice if I pulled an Austin Matthews rookie card out of that. A Upper Deck Series 1 Hockey 2016-17. Upper Deck 2015-16 Series 2 Hockey. Oh, God. Did, <laughs> as Ben will, as Ben G76 will attest to, I did not score here. <laughs> These are all three. Five, eight packs of 2012-2013 score. Ugh. Score is probably one of the lowest sets of, of cards you could probably get in hockey. In regards to... Um, cards... So what here is the oldest set of cards? This is probably the closest to an oldest set of packs in the box. An 0809 Upper Deck Victory. Then probably the 09010. I'm actually going to try to put these in better order. 15, 15, 16, Upper Deck Series 1. 15, 16, Upper Deck Series 2. Series 
16, 17, Series 1. And a 17, 18 Series. So, put these in order here better. 9, 10. This group here. All right, thanks for stopping in, Ben Combs. Catch you later. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the last year of the, of the scores. So, with that said, let's take a look at the 0809 Upper Deck Victory. Find a Victory Rookie or insert card in every pack. Six cards per pack. Uh, let's see if I can read here. We have what can possibly be in here. Victory rookies, one for two random inserts into the specially marked packs of the following insert cards stars of the game and game breakers one in four regular card gold parallel rookie gold rookie cards gold parallel regular card black parallel rookie card black parallel that's pretty much it so let's give her a crack Last from the past. We have. Oh my god. And these are supposed to be upper deck. <laughs> these are as bad as those scorecards. Oh my god. Mm, a little stiff. So, a Patrice Bergeron. A. Sammy Garden Gagne. Oh, actually, that's a rookie card. Okay, that's not bad. A Yarmir Yeager playing for the New York Rangers. A stuck together Roberto Luongo card. Try to. There we go. Hopefully that was enough to break it. Roberto Luongo. Mika Kiprasov to the Calgary Flames. And a Matt Agostini rookie black border card. Oh, hold me back from my excitement. <laughs> so, eh, not a great set of cards you could see. Now let us move on to the... 2009-2010 Series 2 Upper Deck Cards. In our first pack, we will give it a slight bend just in case. I'm having Ben G76 Syndrome. I'm having a hard time to crack the package open. Might have to do is slice technique so from our first pack well, these are a bit nicer stock of a card
first we have a Braden Coburn sophomore year a Wolczyk Wolski which is a fifth year card a Jason Williams uh, Travis Zajat third year card and these are a pretty nice looking card we actually have a insert I believe Alexei Kovalev of the Ottawa Senators. I think it's a insert card, but I could be... No, it is. It is a rant. It is a insert because it's marked here EPRSS. So that's one of the insert cards. Uh, a St. Louis Blues Eric Brewer. A Jonathan Chichu for the Ottawa Senators. And a Henrik Zettenberg of the Red Wings. So there's pack one. No special inserts yet so far. On to pack two. All right, we have <laughs> former Toronto Maple Leaf Kyle Wellwood. For the Vancouver Canucks, his second year with the Canucks. A Chris Kelly, who is still actually playing up until last year. Ottawa Senators. A first year with the Montreal Canadiens, Scott Gomez. A Victory Rookie insert of Michael Del Zotto. 320 R44KP. So there's one insert. We also now have a 8 Hockey Hero number 23 insert of Mark Messier. A Tampa Bay Lightning, Matthias Oland. A Daniel Girardi, third year with the Rangers. And a Thomas Vanek. So... Decent insert in that pack. If you are not keen on uh, trade cards or whatnot, and these do go off, you know, uh, that's cool. Um, maybe later I'll be uh, posting something more. I'll give these a little wobble here. A Andrew McDonald for the St. Louis Blues. A Chris Clark. Rob Niedermeyer. And we have a Young Guns insert. Mm. 
Michael Grabner for the Vancouver Canucks. Actually, it might not be an insert. It's, it's actually, it looks like part of the regular set. But this is an insert. Uh, Daniel Paley from the Boston Bruins. Well, actually, this one is ZK6NR. Marked down in the corner. And the cool thing is... Ben, I don't think you can see that too well, but they actually have the name pronunciations on the back. Dan Haley, or Danielle Ping Ye, P I G H hyphen Ye. Still can't pronounce it, right? Pelier is, sounds better to me. A uh, San Jose Sharks, Scott Nichols. A, uh, oh, wow. This might have a little bit of value. A, uh, Wayne Simmons for the uh, LA Kings rookie card. You know, he's kind of a flop. And first Toronto Maple Leaf card. Uh, John Mitchell, who. And it's actually his rookie card. I don't know where he plays anymore. Or if he's in, even in the NHL anymore. Or playing hockey, period. So. One decent insert out of those. What did you need, Ben? <laughs> now we break into apparently last year of score hockey which score were pretty much your bottom of the barrel cards that you would find in when you were looking for a cheap box of cards these were the ones you usually went to ah. oh how to pronounce the names yeah, you'd think some of these companies would actually do something like that. So let's see what the last year's score looked like. Ugh. I would say not much better than the upper deck rookie cards. So I don't know what the inserts in these are, but Kyle Kluttenberg. These are actually under the Panini branding. A JT Brown Hot Rookie. A E. Jenny Malkin, Art Ross winner, a Henrik Lundqvist season highlight. It doesn't look too bad. It almost looks like a painting. A Matt Cullen, a. Dustin Penner with the LA Kings and a 
second year Eric Wellwood of the Flyers. So, first pack of score was not a score. It was a dud. So, for inserts in these, Gold Rush, Hot Rookie Gold Rush, Black Ice, Hot Rookie Black Ice, Net Cam, First Goal, Team Score, Team Future, The Franchise, The Franchise Original 6, Check It, Score Signatures, Hot Rookie Signatures, Recollection Collection Number 2, 18 or less, The Franchise Original 6 Autographs, Number two, 10 or less, and the franchise triple player checklist. Those are all the inserts that are in these. So, pack number two of seven. <laughs> try to rip through these pretty quick, too. Hey, Bobby Clipper. Yep. I bought a box of championship collection at Walmart earlier. Helps to maybe get like an old pack of tops like this. And no, unfortunately, I did not get an old pack of tops. I got an old pack of 2008 2009 Victory. So let's see what we got here quickly. Brooks like. Mm. Well, I finally do have a insert. Card number NC3. Corey Crawford of the Chicago Blackhawks. 50. Blackhawk players given an award known simply as the belt after each win for a team's top player. Crawford earned the pro wrestling style belt when Chicago snapped a nine game losing skid with a 4-2 stop against the Rangers on February 16th, 2012. <laughs> Day after my birthday. Uh, he stopped 22 shots to end a personal 0-4-1 skid. So there's the back of the card. not anything special but it's an insert uh, Richard Bachman for the Dallas Stars who second year or actually you could say rookie year and he didn't go anywhere uh, Tobias Enstrom Nicholas Backstrom. Andy Green of your New Jersey Devils. And a Valeteri Fipila, who is one of the throw around people that's always rumored to be around somewhere. Yeah, Ben, I thought you were actually saying that you actually needed a card that I had found. Something like that Wayne Simmons, I was going to say. Yeah, that'd be nice. What's it worth? Like $2? <laughs> okay. This might have an insert in it. Well, this actually has Bruin at the front, Bruin at the front. Bruin at the front, Bruin at the back. So here we have a Joey Corvo. 
in a Bruins uniform who originally was a Carolina Hurricane. Uh, another player that got thrown around the league a lot is a center specialist, Michael Hanzus. And uh, former Maple Leaf, Nick, Antrop Nick Antropov, playing with the Winnipeg Jets. For the Washington Capitals, Brooks Leitch. He's actually a decent player. Third year Jonas Enroth card. He's still in the league. Ooh, I wonder if this would be the... No, this couldn't be the last year of his card. But, uh... Nicholas Lindstrom. I know he didn't play too long after, I think, 11-12. And again, uh, third year card. Brad Marchand. Oh, how many more packs to go? Four more packs after this or this. Ugh. It'd be nice if there was an autograph card in here. That would be really, really nice. Speaking of which, look what the first card is here. Brad Marshawn. <clears throat> Jeez. And, uh, yeah. Card number 62. Nothing special about it. Jaden Schwartz. Hot rookie. It's a hot rookie. Card number 521. Card number 36. Cam Ward season highlights. UC Jokinen, who I think is still randomly in the NHL. And here we have a one, two, three, four. Fourth year, Steven Stamkos. Alex Tangay. And Dan Hamhus. So, Dead Pack. All right, Ben. Cool. I should be awake to watch that. <laughs> so if I don't show, you'll know that I've passed out and that's why I'm not there. So uh, take care, Ben. I'll catch you later. Uh, hope you're also uh, getting some business uh, online with your shop happening as well, too. Brad Richards. And we finally have another insert. It is card number NC4. Jimmy Howard of the Detroit Red Wings, who still actually plays with the Detroit Red Wings. 35. It might be tough to top the throw of becoming the first goalie to face a penalty shot in each of his first two games. But Howard, always looking for a new challenge, he appeared in his first All-Star game in 2012 and later backstopped Team USA to an upset win over Canada in the World Championships. That's kind of cool. The uh, card. View the net cam. A season highlight card number three and a Kopitar. A, a Cam Atkins rookie card. That's not too bad. Cam Atkins is actually a pretty decent player. 
Uh, it's a Ben Who's Eager. <laughs> ben Eager. Um, Barrett Jackman is a fairly solid defenseman back in the day. Here's a guy who logged a lot of years in the league and I think also retired not too long after uh, Lindstrom. Sergey Gonchar. He was a wicked offensive defenseman until his last like few years of playing. So a few inserts and nothing, nothing overly special. No signatures. Cool cards, which, considering they throw this in as a basically a here's your filler set, it's not a surprise. Chris Barch, signed by the Devil 710 2012. There's something you don't see on cards much anymore. 218 card 518 Spen Barchi hot rookie he's not bad Kosetson eh. decent player This is a decent player to Burmy Strav, Alexander Burmy Strav. And it's basically his, I guess you could say rookie card because the Thrashers uh, existed in 2010 11 and then they became the Winnipeg Jets in the 2011 12 season. Hey, Similar Evil. Nice to see you. Glad to stop by. Yeah, here we have Trevor Daly, who still actually is in the NHL, was playing this season. Peter Mueller, who bounced around, including to the Leafs for a while, never amounted to anything much. And Dan Girardi, again, another veteran player who I think has actually bounced out of the league. Last two packs. Ryan Johansson. Rookie card. That's not bad. Card number FG. FG4 first goal Ryan Nugent Hopkins of the Edmonton Oilers that's a pretty significant card Ryan Nugent Hopkins but like everything else with this set pretty boring card Jimmy Howard Season highlight. Armis. Ars Armisov. Sean Horkoff. Rookie card. Braden McNabb. For the Buffalo Sabres. And. Patricia. Patrice Bergeron card or as they commonly call him in hockey pasta oh sorry wrong player that's Pasternak <laughs> but Bergeron is on the line with Brad Marsh Marchment and Pasternak for the Buffalo Bruins. So, last pack of the crappy scorecards. New Jersey Devils, Adam Larson. No. 
Adam Larson rookie card. Okay. Tori Krug, hot rookie. Krug is actually very uh, pretty good skilled defenseman. Uh, Martin Erat. Steven Stamkos award winner for the scoring. The Maurice Rocket Richard. Jamie McGinn, still in the league. Thomas Vanek, somehow still in the league, I think. And, well, that's a decent card. Only Patrick Kane of the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> so, the scorecards, meh. Overall, still nothing special. Per se. So now we have up from 2015 a pack of Series 1 and a pack of Series 2. And these ripped apart pretty damn easy. Eight cards per pack. When it comes to cards, I must say, I've never been a big fan of Upper Deck. My one former friend way back in the day, oh, Upper Deck, oh, Upper Deck, oh, Upper Deck. <laughs> Had to be Upper Deck cards. And eventually when Upper Deck cards started to crap, it was like, yeah, there's your Upper Deck cards now. They're garbage. We have a... Kyle Turris card. Nothing. At least these cards are a little bit more nicer with some flair on them. A. Ooh. Okay. That one's not bad. A Jonathan Drouin rookie card. I believe he now plays for the Montreal Canadiens. We have a Steven Stamkos featuring beard. <laughs> uh, Gabriel Laniscog for the Colorado Avalanche. Very good, talented player. And again, a player who had high potential, played for the Jets. And got moved to the Phoenix Coyotes earlier this year. Taylor Hall. And that was fourth year. Speaking of Taylor Hall. Actually he is a free agent this year. That is whenever hockey resumes and everything else. Now let's look at the... Upper part of the set, the Series 2, which are usually for late trades and whatnot. Okay. Third year, Jonathan Huberto. As I showed you before, Wayne Simmons rookie card. Here is Wayne Simmons with the Philadelphia Flyers. A Alex Edler. A Christian Erhoff. Jacob Josephson. Second year Boone Jenner. <laughs> Not to be confused with Kyle Jenner. The 
the younger of the Stahl brothers, Jordan Stahl. And we have a Young Guns, David Musil. David's father, Yaroslav Musil, played hockey for the Czechoslovakia and won a bronze medal at the 1972 Games in Sapporo, Japan. And his father, Franisak, ah, Franisak played 797 NHL games over 14 seasons with the North Stars, Flames, Senators, and Oilers. So this is actually, yeah, his rookie card, Young Gun rookie card. And I don't think he did anything at all. Down to the second last card. And then I can stop boring you folks. We have a pack of 2016-2017 Upper Deck Series 1. the SMR folks, ASMR folks. This one was actually glued, but then again, though, it's not that old of a pack. You know, I honestly bought this on a Lark, and there's a few, few rookie cards. I don't think the inserts I got are anything special. So... Just for something to do, for shits and giggles, and, you know, some of you folks out there actually kind of like this, so. Let's see what we got here. Here we can see where the cards actually look a little bit more nicer. Here we have a Cam Atkinson. A Artem Artis. Anissa Moff, a Boston Bruins Ryan Spooner, Jake Vertanainen, and we'll move that to the back. A Brandon Dubinsky, a Miko Koivu, a Matt Niskanen, for the Washington Capitals. He was a pretty good defenseman. And here, though, is actually a pretty cool insert so i actually finally have a cool insert to show off here a young guns canvas nick Sorensen, which this is canvas number 119 young gun upper deck canvas right wing for the anaheim the anaheim Mighty Ducks. Uh, Sorensen earned a pair of several silver medals playing for Team Sweden in the World Junior Championship in 2013 and 14 while he was playing with the QMJHL's Quebec Ramparts. And his last year in Sweden... Lin Koping, 37 games, 10 goals, 13 assists, 23 points, a plus 5. And let's see if I can get the glare off here to show this better. So you can't see it so much there, but... You can kind of see there the stock. You can see the little ridge lines there in the card. That's the canvas. So it kind of looks like a, a digitally printed on canvas painting. 
So, not a super amazing player, but a very cool card to get. And last but not least, a 2017-18 Series 1 Hockey. Be nice if there was an Austin Matthews in here. <laughs> now, backs of these cards are also very nice. They're kind of a nice, kind of glossy stock. And the front of the card is again a bit nicer. You can see how while there are still cards that are being produced of this quality you're going to find the cards that are like this low like stock quality being like you're like under two dollars a pack cards whereas the cards that look more kind of like this you're going to find in the two plus dollar range um and you could probably go and ask Ben76 for more specifics, but it's a believe how it is. So we have a Colorado Avalanche. You might as well say first-year rookie card in a sense because he only played nine games previously. He's a very good player. Or he's a good player. A Andre Vasilevsky third year card. He's one of the top goaltenders in the NHL right now. Again, when the NHL is going. A Erratic Fask Fasca second year card. Move that one to the back because that's going to be an interesting one to see. Alex Killorn of the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's a Killorn. Horn de Killorn. A. Ah! Bad Terry, bad Terry. Dale Weiss or Weiss. A Nicholas Backstrom. Uh, Matthias Eckholm of the. National Prayers, and this one, okay, this probably has made all of the cards to date um, worth opening the box. So, not sure how much the card is, but given my area, and it is... Insert P13 Upper Deck Portraits of the Rookie Year for Toronto Maple Leafs Mitch Marner. That's a super cool card, and I definitely can't wait to find out that there's any type of value on that. And Maybe it actually have paid for the box that I just ripped open. So, there is the mess of cards. Here is back to my ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> so
So, that is basically the stream for now. I've been going one hour and 16 minutes. Thank you very much to everyone who has stuck around. I hope you have enjoyed watching me rip open a uh, bunch of random cards. The majority of them were pretty much of the low tier level. Uh, the couple inserts I got there in those last few packs were definitely the bigger ones. Um, so beyond that, I shall let you all go and uh, hope you have a great rest of the day. I might be back later on today with some uh, guitar playing. I know I have to uh, really uh, sit down with the Greco again and uh, give it a play as I haven't played for a while with it. Um, also, I'm going to have to get around to uh, changing the preamp tube out of the Bouguera and doing some samples of that as well. So with that said, thank you very much, uh, Bobby Clipper, for the uh, nice ads to the collection. Still don't know what I'm going to do with the uh, all the other cards I got. Uh, probably will sell most of them, and I'm still also sitting on a whole bunch of uh, Tim Hortons Upper Deck hockey cards from this past year. Uh, again, with that said... Hope you all have a great day. Thank you for stopping by and watching me and listening to my little spiel on things. But again, you know, I really only want the best for people that are involved in the guitar community and those around the guitar community. And, you know, I can only further say we need to support the positive people and not support the people that are being negative and crap disturbing uh, as we know there are definitely certain amount of individuals out there that are doing so again that said hope everyone is well be good to each other be kind to strangers as Ben says and uh, with that said Bye for now, folks. See you later.